everyone. Welcome to Taiwan Night, hosted by Taika. I'm Ching Fang, president of Taika. Taika is Taiwan-created content agency. We are a very new institution, only established last year. And we, from now on, we will participate in Frankfurt Book Fair every year. Um, it's, a, it's a pity that we cannot be there physically. This year is a very special year. Usually getting drunk is how people bond together. But uh, since we cannot see each other face to face this year, then let's have a vir virtual uh, drinks. And when we talk about uh, having a drink, and we call it Taiwan night, actually not right now, it's 8 o'clock, or 9 o'clock in the morning in Taipei. But doesn't matter, that's 9 p.m. in New York. So hey, let's have a drink. And let me present our prestigious uh, guest tonight. And the first one is uh, Ti Da Wei. He's a very famous uh, established scholar. Um, he wrote very um, important novels. And also, uh, uh, he wrote a very thick scholarly, oh. is a focus on the gay literature in, uh -huh. in Taiwan. Yeah. And uh, I'm aware that Da Wei, you, you got two novels translated into French, right? What's uh, the title? Yeah, uh, oh, the first one is called uh, the, the Membrane. And uh, which is also being translated in, into English, oh. and the second one is called uh, Pearls. Yes. In, uh, currently it? available in, in French now. Okay, that's great. And I, I, my understanding is a little bit like scientific background. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. About yeah, the I, future. I, 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 I am flattered and surprised to know that uh, French readers are very interested in uh, East Asian science fiction. That's yes. why uh, several uh, science fiction writers uh, in Taiwan are already translated into French. Yeah. You know, the, the readers, they are very passionate. Yes. That's a new trend, I think. Yeah. Yes. And the next one is Ma Xin. And Xin is um, a very famous film critic in Taiwan. And uh, her, she also published several books. And she is on the, on the committee who select books from Taiwan this year. So welcome to Taiwan yeah, Night. Thank you. <laughs> and then the another one, probably most of you already know because he's a regular <laughs> in uh, Frankfurt Book Fair, uh, Greyhawk. How many years you have been uh, participated uh, in uh, Book Fair? Um, in I've been attending the Frankfurt since 2004. 2000, and wow. Yeah, the only time I missed it was 2017 when, when my baby daughter was born. And this so is the second the, time? This is the second time, yeah. And you cannot say you're missing because we still participate in the book fair. Well, in this kind of well I am missing it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But let's talk about this area. It's very, we're actually in a very charming uh, old neighborhood in Taiwan, mm -hmm. right? in Taipei, sorry. And uh, it's called Da Dao Chen. Um, can anyone help me to explain what Da Dao Chen is? Da Dao Chen uh, literally means uh, a, a grand square where uh, farmers, um, uh, how they dry? Yeah, dry, dry the rice with the uh, sunlight. So some bad thing they rice. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. It's very trendy to say and uh, sexy to say that uh, farmers used to uh, some bath their rice uh, <laughs> in the neighborhood. But uh, but uh, actually, the uh, Da uh, became uh, one very important commercial areas in Taiwan. It became the richest area in Taipei, the first one. And uh, all the tea trade, all the rice yes, trade, yes. all happened here. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the reasons uh, it became uh, very chic at that time, but it became very quiet for a while. And recent, these recent years, a lot of young people came here to open a lot of uh, trendy shops, coffee uh, shops, and the selling books, selling their handicraft uh, products and it become very uh, nice neighborhood so it's a little bit like Mahe in, in, oh, in Paris nice, I would say yes. that yeah mm. so uh, if anyone come to Taipei please do explore this area but tonight we're here tonight sorry this morning, this morning. <laughs> we're here to talk about books great why don't you uh, present that book for us yeah um, so this book is called um, tea time adventure and it's actually kind of funny because we're, we're not drinking tea, we're drinking beer yes. right now. Um, it's set, it's, it's a very fascinating story. It's set in a, 
think it's mid 19th century, and at a time that the habit of drinking tea has gradually shifted from the, the, the nobility to yeah. the common people in the British Empire. And so all of a sudden, tea becomes this hot commodity because there's this huge demand. And, and the thing is, the Chinese people used to drink green tea, but the mm. British people, they prefer black tea. So this, this book is about this Scottish adventurer, which is a real person, it's called John Dodd. And he came to Taipei and to investigate the, the tea trade, trying to find the right product he can import into the, into the UK. And he met this another guy, a Chinese man, and they become kind of partner in business. And they, they found oolong tea, which is kind of between green tea and black tea. And that is the, that is the origin, original story of Taiwan's most famous tea. Yeah. And um, this is the first book. And there are already four volumes published already. Wow. Yeah. And I, I heard there was even a kind of virtual reality game Yes, it is happening. Ago. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. This is very cool. Yeah, it, it is very cool. And another book we want to talk about is about uh, this one, right? This is teach people how to cook at home. This Where's book, our food? <laughs> this book is called Home Bar, which is basically having a bar at home. And um, the author is a, is an old friend of mine, actually. Oh. She her name is Pizette, and she's a very experienced editor. Um, one of the best literary editor actually. She has great taste in literary fiction. But for some reason, since I, I met her, she's mainly been editing nonfiction. Mm. Um, and she's now quit. The, she's now left the publishing world to focus wholly on writing and cooking. And we, ever since we, I met her, she always posts some stuff, photos on Facebook about, about her food. Mm. And this is this is a book that you should not read at home at night because oh. it'll make you very very hungry. Um, there are 67 dishes in it, and they're all quite easy to make for her, I guess. Yeah, the creative oh, yeah. cuisine become yeah. very trendy in Taiwan, mm -hmm. and a lot of young people uh, set up their own little shop and little restaurant. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's actually really fun to live in to live in Taipei right, right now. We don't mm. wear masks, we still yeah. free to go out. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, a miracle yeah. for, um, it's a miracle story in 19, 2020, I think. People still miss traveling, missing the nature. At this moment, then we encourage people to read books about mountain and sea. Many Taiwanese pe pe people, ourselves, don't, un don't realize how beautiful Taiwan Island is. It's not only the mountain are very high, we have forests, and we have the sea, we have the plant, we have everything here. Uh, so it's kind of, I think the younger generation uh, is slightly different. They are really turning their eye to nature. They have a very uh, high awareness about environment. And so it's kind of natural that right now it's very trendy to read books and write books about uh, our, our environment. And uh, th there are several important books th this year. Uh, it's all about mountain and sea. Um, I think the, um, there's one book is very special, right? There's a, about a girl who climbed the um, Himalaya together with uh, her boyfriend. And unfortunately something happened and she didn't come back only her boyfriend but however her boyfriend brought back the her manuscript and Ma Xin, can you talk about that book a little bit for us uh, this book yeah. let me think about uh, Taiwan is into the wild to me mm. you know the movie into the wild is so famous oh, into the wild. The, uh, several ago several several years ago so uh, the young writer so feels so empty in city and they decide to travel Himalaya, India. He keep working and they keep writing. Yeah. It's very touching. Oh, the yeah. that, that's that's manuscripts. Yeah. They're always yeah. writing and uh, just like the main character in you know, the Into the Wild. He's not giving up. He's always writing, always uh, encouraging many people to make him grow up. So yeah. it's very encouraging writer, you yeah. know, like uh, like me. 
Yeah. I can see many things from this book. Yes. And encourage me to writing more about that, yeah. or about Taiwan Mountain. Yeah, I think you are right. This is a very inspiring book. Yeah. Although her story is a little bit tragic and only the boyfriend survived, but uh, I think whoever have a chance to pick up the book will realize it's full of hope and uh, dreams. But uh, I, I think in terms of mountain climbing, there's a special uh, career, right? a special profession, that there are special mountain guides. They will mm -hmm. guide you to walk. But yes. there's a book actually yeah. written by our well, a very special author. So mm -hmm. why don't you present this okay, book for good, us? Good. Yes. Uh, this book uh, is basically, I think that there is a journal by a very young mountain guide who, uh, who is Aboriginal. And uh, this guy um, used to uh, work in the city, but uh, he realized that uh, he has to go back to the mountains, to, uh, to his hometown, and uh, to explore what, the, um, what his ancestors and the fathers and the mothers have been doing over the history. And uh, because his hometown is in the mountains, so many of the writers ancestors and the relatives work as um, mountain guides. Ordinary city people would need to hire mountain guides yes. to teach them how to climb the mountains. Yes. And uh, the mountain guides often also work as porters. Yes. Because... Mm -hmm. uh, That's why they carry all yeah, the Yeah, you have to carry yeah. the food wow. or mm -hmm. everything you need in the mountains. Yes, yes. The, the, I think the interesting part is the title of the book is called Use Your Headband, yeah, headband. to yes. carry the whole mountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's how they carry things yeah, yes. all right. the yes. way. And uh, the pictures... You can see that, it's like that he's really the, using the headband. The headband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is important because uh, usually we think that if we use a tote bag, we yeah. use the shoulder straps of the book, uh, emphasizes that uh, actually to use the headband is more uh, useful. For instance, when, when if you use a headband, you can carry the entire body of a cow on your what? own. A cow? Wow. Yes. But uh, of course that means... Obviously, the backpack doesn't work here. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, it's only uh, for urban walking now. The book is also uh, a way to testify to the values yes. in the mountains. Yes. And because we in Taiwan, we really pay too much attention to the cities. Yeah. But uh, actually, there are so much wisdom, so many uh, treasures uh, Indeed. Mm, Indeed. in the mountains. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's also a special book about well and the sea, yeah. uh, written by Liao uh, Hongji. And Liao oh. Hongji actually went to Frankfurt last year, I think. Oh, yeah, he, he's, yes. uh, he's a very important writer in Taiwan, focused on sea literature. And Gray, why don't you talk about that book a little bit? Yeah, so the book is called Meeting Little Flower. Uh, the li little flower is the name of this sperm whale, which is kind of turned into this oh. superstar. Yeah. Um, there's a sightings of him. It's a, it's a he, um, although he's called Little Flower. Um, there's a sighting of this sperm whale, whale every year, and Liao Hongji, the is, is very often on the front line of, of the, these observations. And he's written many, many books of essays, and all major writing about the sea, and has won all, a lot of major literary awards. And this is his, his journal of his encounters with this very special yeah. entity. Mm. So if you feel bored at home, uh, then earn, have your earning, yearning about the nature and traveling. These three books are wonderful read. As we talk about books of nature, mountain and sea were open up in front of our eyes. We also invite a very famous uh, indigenous singer, Chemalase from Taiwan, who belonged to the Taiwan tribe. Through his music, we can experience the power of mountains. Dano 
con tua chao chao ai Hi. Hey. 